Right, can everyone hear me? Yeah, that sounds like you can hear me. Good, right, so yeah, writing Swift. Where's the play button? Where's my mouse? There it is. Writing Swift by Neil Kimmett. So quickly, just about me. Uh, that's my Twitter handle, it's very original. And my name's Neil Kimmett, two M's, two T's. Everyone forgets that. Uh, I work for a company based in New York called Harry's. You might have heard us on some podcasts, maybe. Uh, we're a men's grooming brand. We, so what that means is we make razors and face wash and shave gel and everything to help men look great in the morning. So here's one of our products, looking fantastic. And what's awesome, basically Harry's is pitched um, to not be like cheap, crappy razors, which don't work and cut your face, and not be ludicrously expensive razors, which actually work, but be affordable and actually be good. And what's super awesome about Harry's is last year we bought the factory in Germany that makes our razors. Um, so what this means is we have this amazing, amazingly tight feedback loop. So we sell a razor to customers, then like direct through our website and through our app. Then our customers tell us what they don't like about it. And then we put that straight back into the production of the razors. And then we get this loop going round and round. It's kind of like agile software development, but for razors. Uh, so I work on the app over at Harry's. Here it is. You can use Apple Pay and it's buy razors and it's great. Anyway, so writing Swift, cryptic, cryptic talk, but uh, hopefully it'll make sense as the talk goes on. Basically, I'm just going to tell you a story. So a few months ago, <coughs> I was writing some Swift and I got annoyed with something. The fact that we've got cgrect.0, right? We don't have UI edge insets.0. Why not? And it's super annoying when you're, for example, doing like some view.content inset equals, you can't just do dot zero using that, the like cool type inference of the Swift compiler. You have to write the whole UI edge inset zero. It's rubbish. It's whack, in fact. But we can fix this ourselves, right? We can, we can make an extension in our project on UI edge insets, because Swift's cool, so you can extend structs, add our static variable dot zero that just returns UI edge inset zero. But still, like, come on, Apple. This, this feels like something they should fix. I don't want to have to include this in every project that I do. This one is on Apple. But as my friend here suggested, if you're that kind of person, you could make a radar. Now, if you're anything like me, making a radar kind of makes you feel like this. It's not the best process in the world. It's quite opaque. You're probably going to spend ages writing something, making a sample project. You'll file it, and then you'll just get marked as duplicate. That's, that's no fun. But nonetheless, I'm a good developer, so I headed over to bugreport.apple.com, and I started writing my bug report. But then, then I had an idea. You're probably aware of this, knowing the, knowing the audience, but Swift is open source now, right? We have swift.org. We can go and look at all the cool stuff on there. You can, you can indeed go to github.com slash apple slash swift and just dig through all the source code. If you haven't spent like a couple of hours doing this, I'd really recommend it. There's so much like cool stuff in there. It does at some points make you slightly feel like this because there's lots of C++. But I went for a dig and I thought maybe, just maybe, I might be able to see, see where the cgrec.0 part comes from and see if maybe I could put that on UI edge insets. So sure enough, after some digging, I found in Swift slash standard library slash public slash SDK slash core graphics slash core graphics dot Swift, we have this guy. Uh, and this, this looks quite a bit like the extension that we wrote earlier, making a static var zero. There's some, there's some weird bits that I don't understand, the at underscore transparent and then the fragile bit as well, but you get the gist. That's kind of what we want. Now, we don't really want to put our UI edge insets stuff in here, because UI edge insets is on, it's part of UI kit. It's not part of core graphics. But that's fine, because there's also Swift standard library public SDK UI kit UI kit dot Swift. Maybe we could put it in there. Is that the right place for it? Well, this is what that file looks like. It's adding some protocol conformance to UI edge insets. Uh, and to UI offset, which is a similar struct, just with horizontal and vertical. So 
this seems like a, a nice place for it to go. So I wrote some code. I put it in there. This is actually, I don't know if you can see on the projector. This meant to be green, like a nice diff. Wait, oh, hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kept in the, the transparent and the fragile stuff, but the, the basic gist is I've taken what was happening with CG point, and then I've translated it over to UI agencies. And this is basically exactly what I was writing in my project a few slides earlier. So we're done, right? We can give ourselves a pat on the back. We've done some open source. That's cool, but not quite because we're all good developers here, and we know that one very key thing is missing. I haven't written any tests for it. So how do tests in Swift work? They're a little funky. There's, some, there's instructions on how to get them running in the, in the GitHub repo, which I, I won't go into right now. But I basically found in this Swift test one underscore standard library UI kit dot Swift, found this kind of thing, uh, which at first was a bit what's this doing, this is just printing stuff. But actually it's making two different insets. It's then printing just to standard out a string and then whether the two insets are equal. And then we've got these, these three check statements here, these comments, which actually get picked up by the Swift test runner thing that checks that what the print statements have printed is equal to exactly that. It's a little you know, basic, but it gets us there. So we can kind of morph this into what we want for our UI edge insets. So we check that if we use the actual initializer with 000, and check that we use our new dot zero syntax, just check that they're the same. And then the same for UI offsets, because whilst I was there, might as well. So did all of this, and then wrote a pull request and sent it to apple.com slash Swift. And so there's my, there's my pull request. I wasn't sure there was actually two different types of tests in all of the files around there. There was the weird printy ones we had there, and then some asserts as well. So I put that in there. And then Justin Rose, who, who works on the Apple Swift compiler, then talked to me and told me what to do. And he, so because it's a change to the framework overlays, which sit on top of the UI kit, he then had to send it to those teams at Apple. Um, anyway, so he told me to use the, the printy style tests and then later they're going to convert that to some new testing framework that's not just printing stuff. And then just a cool month and five days later, the answer came back from Apple and UIKit approved the change. So we ran the CI and it got merged. How awesome is that? So now, <laughs> thank you. So now, now some code that I've written is on the Swift 3 branch on GitHub. So that's awesome, but even more awesome than that, this WWDC, I went and I downloaded the Xcode 8 beta, I hit File New Project, bam, there it is, in Xcode 8, in the iOS 10 SDK. How cool is that? So what's great about this is like a year ago, two years ago, if I had encountered this problem, I would have complained loudly on Twitter, I would have maybe filed a radar. Who knows if I would have got a reply. It would have kind of been rubbish. But now, because we have ownership of Swift, we can do what we want with it. It's not Apple's anymore. So next time you have a problem with some framework or with some Swift thing, instead of just complaining, just see if maybe you can fix it. Thanks. And I wrote a blog post about it, which is there. And I'll put these slides on my website as well. Cheers, Neil. That was grand. Um, of course. Are you happy to take any questions? I can take if some questions if anyone has any questions. Um, anyone got a question? Um, so it's more comment, but for bug reports for Swift, there's obviously bug report dot. Very Swift good point. Or, which. They do get you get you see with the responses more than you do with radar, so you actually get some of that loop happening, even if you can't fix it yourself. It's less. So it's less not like a, it's not like a digital dustbin. It's not a black yeah. hole like radar. <laughs> Marvelous. That's good. Um, so how in intimidating was it to 
kind was, of go through and so you, you had your little itch that needed to be scratched I suppose so it mm. could be quite intimidating if you go right, I, I want to contribute but wh where should I start I suppose having that yeah having that itch thing to mind. be scratched I always find that is the easiest way to get involved with kind of any bit of open source just something that annoys you even if it's you see a typo in someone's blog post and then you find out that's actually just some github repo and just you can just go and fix it just getting stuck in is the best way to get involved. From when you decided to have a crack at fixing it, how long did it take you to get the development environment to a point where you could run those tests and make the PR? I think it was just that afternoon. It was a matter of a few hours. Have you been tempted to fix anything else since? Not yet. I haven't got sufficiently annoyed. I need to find some more things to annoy me. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Yeah. Cheers, Neil.